Hello everyone, this is Liwe Model. So today we have an electric locomotive from Hornby. The part number is R3740. It's a class 92 locomotive in Caledonian sleeper livery, road number 9023. So let's take a look at the box first. So right here we have a nice uh, picture of what is inside. If I look on top, like all the Hornby Railway boxes, you're going to find the top-down view of the locomotive. And in the back, we have a bit of history about the prototype. And also we have the information that in real life, this is classified as having a route availability of 7, which requires a quite wide uh, uh, radius to be able to turn on the tracks. So, something interesting here, you have a drawing of... Uh, What's inside? Well, the date drawn was 1995. So, that's approaching 30 years. This is very similar to the uh, Jouef model I showed not too recently. Oh, sorry, Lima model. Uh, that was not Lima anymore, but Hornby. So anyway, the tooling changed of hands a couple of times. So this is a modern interpretation of an old tooling. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, what modification they made. And uh, also, uh, it was a pretty cheap model. I think I purchased this for something like £65 about a year ago. So, let me open it up. And let's take a look at the documentation that came with it. So this is uh, your standard Hornby instruction manual, very generic uh, information in front, a couple of instructions inside concerning uh, how to remove the body, it's all clips, uh, unfortunately this one does not have screw, it does have a 8 pin decoder socket, and it mentioned a whole bunch of things about a working pantograph, but uh, sadly this one does not have any working pantograph, as you will see that pantograph is in uh, Plastic, so cannot conduct electricity in any way. So a couple of interesting things about the Class 92 while I open the package here. So the Class 92 was used, uh, among other things, uh, in uh, the railway line between uh, Great Britain and France. So it would actually go in the tunnel under the English Channel. Uh, this particular model was first operated uh, by uh, the uh, SNCF, the Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer Français, which uh, is a French state railroad, up uh, mid 2010s when it was uh, repainted uh, in this and uh, operated by a private company uh, for uh, sleeper cars. So, so let's take a first uh, quick look at the model. So here's one end. So this model is not glossy, if you can see. However, I do think that overall the livery on this is very, very good. Uh, everything is crisp, there is no paint splash, there is no um, color bleed or anything look at this this uh, stripe this orange stripe on top there it's completely straight very very sharp the grills are all molded in they're not uh, like they're not etched or anything so uh, but if you, you have to take a real close look to see that uh, they're not separately fitted things because you know the the overall livery has been very 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 well applied so, yes, this model does have lights. The lights that it has, though, uh, they don't have any frame, they don't look particularly realistic, but it does have lights, which is more than uh, what can be said for a lot of more expensive models. So, let's take a look at the roof. As this is an electric locomotive, there is a lot of details there. First of all, there is those, what appears to be separately fitted horns, and then you do have pantograph, the pantograph you can raise them, however, they are completely made out of plastic, so they won't be working anytime soon. 
and also they're a bit fiddly to put back down and tend to uh, raise up again other than that you have a whole bunch of isolator electric uh, cables uh, vents and a whole bunch of other things that's a lot of parts uh, sure looks a bit chunky by today's standard but I guess for when this was uh, originally made it's still pretty good it does have what appears to be separately fitted wipers at the end here we already talked about the lights that handrail here is just molded and if you look at the buffer beam itself it does have quite a few molded details although all the uh, buffers are not sprung or anything one interesting thing about the class 92 if you look at what those white skis or ski look like right here that you have on both sides of each bogey here, 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 here it could also pick up electricity from uh, a third rail and I think that this is a very uh, a very nice uh, details that they've put if you look at the bogey itself well this one is a bit unrealistic as you see uh, it's just a single screw and what you see here is a couple of wire it can rotate at very unrealistic angle like if I do this here yeah that's not that's not I don't think this is very prototypical but uh, yeah the, you have uh, a total of three axles on this one if you look closely well they all have pickups and that's a good thing but none of them are motorized now the other bogey is a bit of a different thing oh, we get a bit of lubricant here there we go uh, the middle axle here is completely free also it does have pickups but it's completely free so um, that means that this model has a total of 12 wheels which are touching the tracks and out of those 12 wheels only two axles are actually powered this one and this one so uh, they had to compensate uh, somehow for that so that's why you're gonna find traction tires on this one and this one here traction tires are not great because they tend to dry up with time but the, the good thing about traction tires is that they sure compensate and give a good pulling power for this one although not as good as you might have think it to begin with this model out of the box was somewhere around 230 grams so it was derailing it wasn't really it wasn't really reliable in that sense so I've actually added a bit of weight so right now it does have 368 grams yeah so I actually added a couple of uh, a couple of weight inside of this to give it a bit more traction and you know since I did that just by adding a little bit of weight this model is much more reliable and uh, it runs much better also so what else you've pretty much seen the whole outside of it if we take a look inside the cab there is some details there although I struggle to see if there is any painting there or if that's just part of the molding so all the cabs both ends they have full mold including dash and seats so to open this uh, model up uh, I'm not going to do it right now because it's a bit fiddly, but you have to remove four tabs and then the tab just slides it. It was pretty easy to DCC fit, it was mainly just the thing about removing the plug that it came with and plugging the new decoder there and Bob's your uncle. So uh, what do I think of this? Well. This is a good instance, like the Zhu F1, where a new livery, a couple of more modern features actually regenerate a model a lot. Um, I know some people are going to disagree and that's completely fine. Uh, I do like uh, more simple models, they tend to break less. 
and uh, also they tend to be cheaper. Now, if this was uh, uh, at a modern price, uh, you know, like something like uh, $300 or something like this, this would not be acceptable and I would not be interested by it. But, you know, due to the fact that this one costed me something like 60 to 70 pounds, somewhere in there, uh, I think this is quite fine. Uh, I really do like the fact that it came with uh, a block of ice packaging like this one. Let me start to pack it back up. Uh, because usually cheaper model tends to come in one of the nasty styrofoam packages. So that, that was a nice touch. Um, beside that, yeah, I'm surprised that they haven't put just slightly more weight in it out of the factory because, you know, it really ran not that great. It was slipping, uh, it was derailing sometimes. But now that I've just added a little bit of extra weight in it, well, it's it's a much more better model. So, what do you think of this? Uh, do you have the original Lima model this was based on? Uh, I would be interesting to know in the comments. Uh, what do you think about those uh, refurbishment that the manufacturer do with uh, older tooling? Um, that they've added, uh, you know, LEDs and other type of things on the older models and modernized the motor also. Well, all of that, I'm I would be interested in knowing it. So on that note, this was the Wii model. I wish everybody have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. The Wii model out.